Well, hello everybody, this is Dr. Charles C. Lucas. I am the very proud, elated Senior Pastor of Promise Land Ministries. Welcome to another broadcast of the Promise Land Ministries Network in beautiful Peace Street Corners, Georgia. We're so happy to have you here. We thank you for, for, for those who are here and coming on campus. Thank you for being patient with our new time, amen. And so we're super excited about that. Before we get started, I always tell you, guess what? Share and subscribe. Share and subscribe. You know, hey, look, look, I, I, Pastor Lucas, I love you. You my, you, you're my pastor. You're my spiritual this and this and this. So guess what now? Spiritual authority who loves you, not your boss, but someone who loves you saying, share and subscribe. Why? Because guess what? That, 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 that helps you evangelize your family. That helps you witness your family. And guess what? When you're doing it, you also sharing in the labor of the ministry. You're actually doing a part of the ministry yourself by just simply clicking share and subscribe. Then also next, guess what? Give. You know, we got that. At, you know, I'm going to bring it up now. Cash app is Takelify, but we got something called Givelify. Amen. Right? Guess what? In your Android and your um, Apple um, 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 device, your iPhone, you got. You can go to the Google Store or Google Play Store, or you can go to the Apple Store. And guess what? Share. I mean, you can um, um, download Givelify, and then look up. Uh, Promise Land Ministries Incorporated in Peachtree Corners, Georgia. That's Promise Land Ministries Incorporated now, and the location is Peachtree Corners, Georgia. And give. That's a part of your worship. That's how you tell God, thank you for health. Thank you for this. Well, I didn't have to pay God. No, it's sometimes, guess what now? When you're just showing, that's a token of, Lord, I appreciate you. Guess what? The Bible says where your treasure is, that's where your heart is also. Amen. Let's go ahead and get into the word of God. Amen. We're going to go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you today, Lord. We surrender to you during this exciting time in our lives, Lord God. Father God, I ask you to have your way, Lord God. None of me and all of you, Lord God. We bind every spirit of distraction, Lord God, every hindering spirit, Lord God, and we stamp this message in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, now, you know we just got off a series, amen, we got a series called Goodness, amen, and guess what, now, this one is called, guess what, Meekness, this is, we're going out through the fruit of the Spirit, right, and we got this message called, we got, we're going through a series called Meekness, let me take this hat off that, because I'm sweating, I know, look, <laughs> surprise, right, and so guess what? We, got, we have a series now uh, called meekness, amen, and that is a part of the fruit of the Spirit, all right? Meekness doesn't mean just being uh, passive and, and weak, um, um, but guess what? Meekness is trusting God. Meek people don't have to raise their voice because guess what? When you're in the will of God, guess what? You're protected. You're protected from evil. You're leaning on in the arms of God. Amen. And guess what? I'm, this series is going to show you how powerful that is to just rest on God. Don't you understand? Pastor Lucas, I want to be prosperous. Pastor Lucas, I want this. I want a boy. I want to have a great company. I want to have a television. This. I want to have a, 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 a billion dollar corporation. I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be this in sports and entertainment. And guess what? Now you're going to have enemies and you can't fight them all. So meekness is going to teach you the skill of holding your peace and letting the Lord fight your battles. So we're going to go over this. For, we're going to go over this month. We're going to go over the story of Joseph, the story of Daniel and Jesus. Guess what now? And we're going to begin today with a story about the children of Israel and how they were attacked by their enemies. And God told them he was going to fight their battles. How many of you are struggling right now? Guess what now? I'm already starting to breathe. But guess what now? Guess what? You know why you're weary? Because you have been fighting something that you should have beaten a long time ago. But guess what now? You've been fighting with the wrong strategy and you become literally weary. That's why you're depressed. That's why your faith is weakened. That's why you want to go back into other sins. That's why you want to leave the church. Come on now. Let, hold on. Let me, get, let me get my stuff over here now. First lady got me a little handkerchief. And guess what? That's what's happening now. You're becoming weary and fatigued. And guess what now? You're blaming God, but you've been on a battlefield fighting that spirit too long. Why? Because you've been fighting the wrong way. You've been fighting with your mouth. You've been fighting with worry. You've been fighting with manipulation. You've been fighting with working over and over time. You got to understand that any time 
I'm going to go ahead and start reading. But anytime, guess what, that, 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 that you are going to victory, anytime that you're going to have success, success in life, anytime that, guess what, you're going for greatness, guess what, the devil doesn't want you to get there, and he's going to fight you. But guess what? Now, the Bible says if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Let's go ahead and read here. So we're talking about, and the message today is called Meekness Part 1, Trusting God to Fight your battles. And I already feel the power of God. I thank you. So the foundation scripture for the fruit of the Spirit, you already know it. Galatians 5, 23 says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, which is patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, or faith. We're going to come to that one. We're going to put that last. I skipped over that to get the gentleness or meekness and self-control against such there is no law. And so now we are spending a month on meekness. Amen. And what is meekness again? Meekness is not just being quiet, but meekness is a posture in faith that says, God, I trust you. I don't have to worry about it. I'm loved by you. And when you know that you're loved by God, guess what? Now you don't have to raise your voice. You don't have to go back. I'm gonna shut that up. You don't have to go back and forth with somebody at your job or somebody in your life or a sickness or disease. Now you're wrestling with a spirit out of your flesh and worry. And guess what? That thing is overtaking you now because its strength is in the flesh. This series is going to teach you how to step back in the spirit and begin to draw the line and say enough is enough. Psalm 37 and 11. Psalm 37 and 11. And it says here, and we're going to go over these in Bible study. So, you, so I just need you to listen right now. But, but the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The meek are going to inherit the earth. Why? Because they let God fight their battles. Don't you understand that where God has put you, that enemy is already defeated and you're trying to fight a human. You're trying to fight a spirit. But because they come at you as a human now, you're trying to argue with them. And you need to understand it's a spirit. And that's good news because Jesus has defeated every spirit. Guess what now? Matthew chapter 5 verse 5 says, blessed are the meek for they shall what inherit the earth. That's what Jesus says here. And all these we're going to go over this month. Psalm 46 and 10 through 11, 46 and 10 says this, be still and know that I am God. Guess what? I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. How does God get glory? A lot, God will allow you to go through things so he can pull you out in front of everybody. God will allow, guess what now, I want to be promoted on my job. And a lot of times God has to let the devil fight first. And then guess what now, he delivers you and brings you out at a higher level. We need to be able to trust God and be meek and say, Lord God, it doesn't feel comfortable, but guess what now? I trust you enough to make it good. I trust you now, Lord God, enough that guess what now? This is going to work for my good. What they meant for evil, you will turn around. You will turn around. You're going to turn around here. And this is why I want to go to this. why I want to go. That's why I kind of ran through these scriptures because this is it now. So this, I want you to turn to the book of Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. I know it says 1 through 17, but we're going to do some reading today. We're going to go higher than that. Amen? We're going to go higher than that. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. And guess what? I'm going to set this up for This is the children of Israel. Guess what? They're in their promised land. They are what God wants them to be. You can be, you can be in God's perfect will and drama show up. But it cannot. Drama will come, but it can't overcome. They are in the promised land. They're what God told them to be. They're in the right place. Your, your, your marriage is right. This ain't because you married the wrong person. Guess what now? It's not because you, you, your child, you made a mistake with your child. It ain't because you're on the wrong job. Guess what now? The reason why you're having the trouble you're in is because you are in the right place. And because of that now, the enemy is literally trying to fight it. It's fine. He's literally trying to fight you in your promised land. And guess what now? Look at your name and say it's training. Training for remaining. And so God will allow the enemy to come in your promised land. But guess what now? It's not there to help to stop you. It's there to promote you. Yes. 
What I need you to understand is, guess what? When God puts you in a place, he can keep you there. He can keep you there. He will keep you there. Amen. So let me go ahead and read here. And guess what? So the children of Israel are in the promised land, right? And they'll guess what? Now they're minding their own business. And then all of a sudden, now enemies start showing up. And guess what? They don't just show up in, in ones. They go out and go with nations gather together. They want to wipe them out. Why now? Because the devil is mad that you made your promise. The devil is mad that you found the woman of your dreams or the man of your dreams. The devil is mad that you got that job. The devil is mad that you got that increase. The devil is mad. So guess what now? He's going to try to come, and even though God has promised certain things, he's counting on the fact that you forgot that God is on your side. What he wants you to do is handle it yourself. That's why they're arguing with you. Why are they doing that? Because they want you to open your mouth and handle it yourself. The devil wanted them, the children of Israel, to come and fight this battle themselves. So let's go ahead and read now. Uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1 through 17 here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and read it. And it came to pass after, uh, after this also that the children of Moab, now look at the name and say the children of Moab, and guess what? It wasn't just them, the children of Ammon. Guess what now? And, the, uh, and, and with their other, and, and with them other besides the, the Ammonites came against uh, uh, Jehoshaphat to battle. Guess what? And they wasn't just, guess what? All of these people come, oh my God, all this stuff. It's like all hell broke loose since you paid that call. All hell broke loose since your child graduated. All hell broke loose. Guess what now? Huh? Since you decided to get saved. And the devil wants to lie to you and say, you're in the wrong place. He's trying to get you off that place. But guess what? You are strong enough to stay. Amen. The devil does not want you to know that you're strong enough to stay. You got God on your side. Yes. Look at your name. And guess what? I want to encourage you. Don't ever let the, the attack be stronger than your God. So guess what? Now we need to sometimes deplore the, 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 the spirit of meekness and say, God, I don't have to say anything. I'm supposed to be here. You remember when Dr. King then went and they tried to integrate that lunch counter and in Greensboro, North Carolina, and they were throwing food at him and doing all kind of other stuff? They, they, I got shot. they sat there. Why? Because I'm supposed to be here. Devil, I don't care what you say. I pay taxes. I'm an American too. I'm a human being. I belong here. I'm not going to let you tell me that I'm not worthy to be here, but you are. I'm so, look at your name. I'm supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be driving what I'm driving. I'm supposed to be married to what I'm married. I'm supposed to be healed. You're in your right place. And guess what? Even in your mind, and guess what happened now? That some of you are, are, are having dreams about company. Some of you are having dreams about life. Some of you, you are having dreams about success. Guess what? You're having those dreams because you're supposed to be there. Yeah. 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 Mediocre people don't have enemies come against them like that. And mediocre people don't have people come and complain about your house. The reason why they complain about your house is because your house is expensive. So they gathered together to, to battle, and guess what now? And guess what? And there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, there comes a great multitude against you from beyond the sea on this side of Syria, and behold, they are in Hazantar, uh, which is in, in, you know what I mean, in, 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 in Come on, Dr. Lucas. I need in Jedi or in Gedi, right? Okay. And that, verse 4, and Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of the cities of Judah, they came to, guess what, seek the Lord. That look at your language and say, the Lord is your strength. Guess that's your advantage. Your enemy don't have him. Your enemy can't deal with you because God is for you. They can outnumber you. They can outpower you. They can be stronger than you. They can have more authority in the earth than you. But guess what now? If God be for you, who can be against you? Look at your neighbor and say, rest. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm trying to preach this without running. But if you're going to be successful in life, if you're going to be prepared for prosperity, the devil is going to stir up people. You need to be able to handle that and know who you are. Amen. And not let that shake you and understand you where you're supposed to be. 
You are who you're supposed to be. Amen. And guess what? Meekness says, I ain't got to fight every fight myself. Amen. Meekness says, I can, what the whole song says, I can hold my peace, baby, and let the Lord fight my battle. And guess what? Victory shall be mine. Guess what? Now let's go ahead and keep reading. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Jerusalem. This is amen now. In the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord, our God, fathers, you are, aren't you not God in heaven? Look at it. He said, not only are you God, you're my God. You're my family's God. You're who we rely on. And you need to understand when he's your God, you're safe. You're secure. The devil wants you to think that you're going through this by yourself. The devil, again, wants whatever problem you're into now, then guess what? He wants you to go out there and handle it yourself so he can use what you say against you, so he can use your attitude against you. So he didn't want you to go and cuss that boss out. He wants you to go and tell baby mama all, or baby daddy, you want to go and slash his tires. He ain't going to pay child support. Oh, well, I fix him. No, just sit God on him. Love him, let him see his children, and guess what? Now be meek about it and let God fight your battles. God can fight better than you anyway. By the time God gets finished with him, you're like, man, Lord, man, Lord. <laughs> I wouldn't have did all that. Man, Lord, woo. <laughs> huh? Your enemy wants you to handle it so that they don't get delivered in the hands of God. What are you worried about today? What are you in fear about today? What are you concerned about today? That ain't, your, that ain't even your battle. Some of you, God gave you a car and you're worried about losing it every day. God gave you a job, you're worried about losing God gave you a child, I'm worried they're going to go and get shot. I'm worried. No, God gave it to you. Aren't you God of heaven? Don't you rule over all the kingdoms of, he uh, of the heathen? He's saying, no, you rule over the gun godly too. Huh? And in your hands is not power and might so that none can withstand you. That's the right perspective. He got to understand now that your problem is you got you got a problem that your problem is bigger than your God in your head. And what meekness does is exalts God and minimizes your problem. It exalts God and minimizes Goliath. It, and you need that to go. When you're going to go into battle, when you're going to go into conflict, when you got enemies coming against you now, the last thing you need to be doing is, oh, my God, Lord, they're coming with everybody. You, dude, they even got Debo out there. Man, <laughs> man, they got some big brothers. Man, what? Woo! <laughs> I once, one guy, one brother wear a size 17. Man, oh Lord, I saw, Lord, I can't, oh no. Lord, he big, man. <laughs> oh, I heard he knocked out five people last week. <laughs> oh, Lord, help me. Lord, save him. <laughs> That's the wrong attitude. <laughs> That's the wrong attitude. Huh? They got a cousin just got out of prison. Oh, Lord, help me. <laughs> they rolling 10 deep in the car. Huh? <laughs> hmm? And so what happens is because of that, you get to faint, you get nervous, you get scared. What in the world? Did I mess up my slides here? Hold on. Okay. I guess I did. Hold on. <laughs> go to slide 17. Now. And guess what? Let me go ahead and read here. Huh? Aren't you not God? Uh, who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people and gave it to the seed of Abraham, your friend what forever? You have to understand. Meek people understand that God's faithfulness is stronger than the devil's threats. When you're in your promise, it doesn't mean there's not going to be challenges to that because the devil is mad that you're at peace. The devil is mad that you reconcile with your children. The devil is mad that you're healthy and got a good health report. The devil is mad. He mad even if you're sick and you got joy that day. He terror, he tormented by it. He wants you to be crying every day in the promised land. huh? He can't stop you from eating the cake in the promised land, but he's going to cry. He's going to get you to, well, you should have some milk with it. <laughs> huh? That fool complained in heaven. He wants you to be in heaven is perfect. 
He found something in heaven to complain about <laughs> and got kicked out. Hmm? Land for this people, your friend forever. In verse 18, and they dwelt therein, and you built them, and, and, and we built you a sanctuary then with your name, saying, If when evil comes to us as the sword or judgment of pestilence or famine, we stand before this house in your presence, for your name is in this house, and cry unto, your, unto you in our affliction that you would hear us and guess what help. They're talking about that covenant that Solomon made. When Solomon sacrificed all of these animals, he said, Lord, Lord, you know we're going to sin. But when we sin, Lord, we can come to you. Can we come to you and then you fix it for us? You heal us and deliver us from our enemies. And God agreed. He took that deal. And so Jehoshaphat is reminding him of the covenant that, that was made when Solomon built the temple the first time. That day he built the temple and kept sacrificing so that God came to him in his dreams and said, whatever, what do you want? He did it so well. I feel the presence of God here. This is a joyful time. The Lord want me to tell you, this is a joyful time for you. But the Lord want me to tell you, that, guess what now? Because of the, the tormenting spirits in your life, the spirit of fear in your life, that the devil is, is taking this season from you. That's God ordained. But guess what now? The spirit of depression, the spirit of murmuring, the spirit of fear is getting on. It's trying to overtake you now. And you're literally a miserable in paradise. And look at your neighbor and say, it's all in your head. And what's in your head, the devil got it coming out your mouth. Repeat after me. If God be for us, who can be against us? You need to get that in your spirit when you eat that steak. Now let, let the devil be mad when you kissing your boo. <laughs> let the devil be mad. Huh? When you holding your grandchildren, when you uh, uh, reunited with your child, when your child got out of prison saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, let the devil be mad. You have been through too much to step into this season depressed, mad, miserable, complaining, backbiting, mumbling, scared, all this other stuff. You know the scripture said no weapon formed you against you to prosper. But guess what? Verse 13 says that God promised that it will form, but it won't be by him. But he promised that he, who, he whoever gathers it together against you will fall for your sake. You need to look for it. Yeah. Amen. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of your possession. He builds a great case which you gave to us to inherit. Oh, our God. He didn't say, God, our God. Will you not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that comes against us. Neither uh, uh, we know what to do. But uh, guess what? Our eyes are upon who? You. Meek people understand it's not by my power or my, my might. Meek people are people of prayer. Meek people are people of faith. Don't get it. Just because they're quiet don't mean they don't have faith. And, and, and guess what? Faith is active. Faith, you can be quiet, but you're still going to write the book. You can be quiet, but you're still praying. You can be, you're not just doing, quiet and, it, tab, and, and laziness is two different things. Quiet people are doing something. What they're doing, they're praying in the spirit. They're doing all kinds of other stuff. Yeah. They're not disruptive with it, but guess what they're doing? They're using that time. Man, I'm reminding you of your word, Lord God. Yeah. That's a meek person because he went, man, God, I thank you for the promise. I thank you for the covenant. I thank you for this right there. Hmm. Quite, you ever seen a meek person? A meek person will give you the word. They enjoy. They always enjoy. They confident. They build you up. You feel better when you leave. You don't feel condemned. Like man, yes, <laughs> huh? I got an injection of faith. The word. I got an injection of this stuff. Oh, I feel great. They're not like, oh, well, you shouldn't feel, you know, you know how religious people are. Why are you worried? Because the Lord said, no, that ain't, that's not meekness. Meekness says, don't you know you're more than a conqueror, baby? Don't you know that God, has, hey, look, guess what? Many of the are righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. You're like, woo! Man, I like, I like calling sister so-and-so. Hmm. They don't make you feel bad about being down, but they know the right word to pick, to pick you back up with the word. 
Don't you remember when you did that last time? I remember somebody calling me. I ain't remember. He complimented. He said, and I don't know if he was being sarcastic or whatever, but he said, you know, Charles, everything you touch flourishes. And I was like, man, that was a big, I say, thank you. He sounded frustrated like he had a little hate on Well, whatever. I know you, of course, it's to see everything you touch flourishes. <laughs> It's, it's, it's the guest. God, I'm gonna go something. You got to understand who you are and begin to pray from a posture of guess what? This is my God. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this coming against my God? I am his property. And guess what's going to happen now? Guilt and condemnation going to come to you. Look at what you did. Look at what you said. You know, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Why, God, are you quiet when I'm suffering? Because he's waiting on you to pray in faith. He's waiting on you to believe. He's waiting on you to know who he is. He wants to know. He wants you to remind him of who you are in him. He wants you to understand that you have value. Yes. Yes. The Bible says what remind me of my what word. You got to remind. He said, come, let us plead together. Remind. He wants to under. He wants you to understand how great he is. And so opposition has to show up so he can show out. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time, it's time. For, promotion. for promotion. God is never going to let the enemy attack without giving you a bonus in between. Never. It's never happened. He ain't never allowed stuff like that to happen and you not come out on the other end. brother. He don't just deliver you and leave you there. No. The devil pays for that. Huh? They came against us and, and all of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones and wives and children. Let me give you a backdrop real quick. Guess what? The Moabites were the same people when the children of Israel were marching around that mountain. And guess what? Now, they were hiding in the mountaintop, hiring this prophet Balaam to go and curse them. Remember that? And Balaam couldn't curse. He said, I can only say what the Lord say, say. He said, we paid you to curse them. He said, no, surely, uh, uh, surely Israel will be a great nation. He didn't just say that. He said, God said, surely I will make them a great nation. <laughs> what does that mean? Your enemies can't stop you. That curse, that witch can't stop you. When God determines something, the Bible says forever, oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. And so what happened now, the Moabites are mad because God cursed them for ten generations. Since that's why Ruth then were messed up at first. Because they were part of that curse. Yeah, what they're talking about here is the Israel's reminding God, look, we helped them. You told us not to wipe them out. The whole story is that guess what now? They wanted that they had been, they beat up the, Amor the Amorites in, 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 in um in in uh, the wilderness, and they were going after uh, Moab, but God said, no, that's your cousin. They are the seed of Esau. Oh, no, Lot. Lot. You kin to them, don't wipe them out. And so God, they said, look, we were nice to them when we could have wiped them out, but now they're trying to come at us. Lord, why is it that I fed them? Why is it that I made them comfortable? And they're still talking about me. <laughs> Why? Because you in the promised land. You in something they want. And so you confuse <laughs> as to why, and you're trying to make friends with jealous people. You'll never make them friends. You'll never be friendly with them. I do this, I do that, I do this. Why are they complaining behind my back? Why are they doing this? Why? Because they're simple. They're not grateful. Some of you have more bites in your life that you've done things for that you could have been mean. You could have done this. You could have said no. You could have not answered the phone. You could have not lent the money. You could have not done this right now. And then guess what they do now? You've been nicer to them than anybody's ever been to them in their whole life. And they still have turned around and turn around and talk about you behind your back. That's a more bite. And you think it's you. But what's happening now is the devil will stir people up and God will allow it. But why? Because God understands that the ditch that they dug, they're going to fall in it. You need to look at your neighbor and say, wait for it. 
You need to trust God. You need to trust your relationship with God. You need to understand you got value to God. The, every, the very hair on your head is numbered. You need to go out of here and get you some sweet potato pie and get you some. Hey, 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 hey. First lady can cook some, 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 some potatoes. Don't show up at my house, Andre. Look, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> huh? Oh, she can throw that down. Get you some, uh, some potato salad and, and sit by that fan and, go, and, and, go, and give God some praise. Yes, yes. Prophet Harris just say, get your popcorn ready. God loves you. You are his property. You are his friend. You are a seed of Abraham. You have a covenant with God and it's everlasting. And guess what now? Don't let the winds and the waves, don't let the Amorites and the Moabites in your life get you so afraid that you think you're by yourself. I don't know who I'm talking to, but everything in your life looks like it's going to take you out. Everything looks like, looks like they're going to lay you out. Looks like they're going to do this. Look like they're going to do this. But you need to go back on what you, you need to go back on what you know, which is God is faithful. Verse 14. And then upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Matthiah, the Levite of the sons of Asaph, they were the musical people, came upon the spirit uh, in the midst of the congregation. He said, hearken ye all of Israel, ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and the king, uh, he's prophesying this time, and the king, and to you, King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid. Guess what? Now I need you to focus on this. Nor dismayed, that means more confused or worried, by reason of this great multitude, guess what? For the battle is not what? Yours, but God's. Meek people understand. Look at your neighbor and say discernment. Some things you can't pray your way out of. Some things you got to wait your way. Sometimes you got to outlast it. Sometimes you got to wait on God because God trying to set them up. And so you're like, I don't, my prayer is not working. It's not that your prayer is not working. It's timing. God is working. And when God's sovereign will is working, it's going to override your prayer. God is answering your prayer, but he's answering his way. I pray for, I suffer for years on the sun. Lord, please. Lord, and Lord said, no, I got it. I didn't get away with that. This is not going to destroy you. You are God's people. As long as you keep coming to church and, and seeking God and standing under his protection and going to him, he's going to answer it. Don't get worried just because you're not hearing anything from God. That means he's working. And you meet people. Hey, look at the name and say, I trust God. And that means that God might not speak to my spirit about everything, but if he's not speaking, you need to write. Okay, you know what? We always rejoice when we hear from God. You need to cut crazy when you don't hear from God. Because why? You know he's working something out. He got a plan. He's going to fix this thing. You're like, oh, shoot. When God get quiet, you need to be hallelujah. Because <laughs> when God gets quiet, he got a long-term solution. It's a set Look at your name and say, it's a setup. When God gets quiet, it's a setup. I'm going to give a testimony real quick. And I, and I, but at one time, man, I was going through some stuff, boy, and, and I got taken to court. <laughs> and I had been a contractor, and I usually always get these contracts. Man, that, that little thing, that little technical thing, I, I had a great interview, and they said, we, you're hired, right? And they said, we're going to do the two-week background check. They did all that stuff. I was supposed to work two days before I start work. They said, hey, uh, we can't, you can't start. Why? I said, why we can't start? He said, we don't have the money for it. I said, that's never happened before. I said, God, what's, I said, Satan, I bind you. And the devil's talking to me like, look at how powerful I am. That don't sound right. <laughs> God got quiet. So I go up in the courtroom and the people that were trying to sue me, they're like, well, this is how much he makes because he just signed a contract for X amount of dollars an hour. And they had a spreadsheet breaking down what they get, what I get. And all, they thought they were smart. They were looking at me, look at how smart, that spirit, that spirit that was operating in was like, look at how smart I am. And God was quiet. And as soon as they said, I knew what was going to say. I said, Your Honor, I don't have that anymore. <laughs> ah, they look stupid. Because they felt like they were my friend. And they thought that that was the right time when I had money to go get it. And they realized I didn't have money. And then guess what? They tried to go run me outside like, hey, Charles, uh, we missed you, you know? I got some lasagna for you. <laughs> 
Hey, pal. <laughs> come on, pal. <laughs> come on, come on. Let's hang out. God was quiet. And everything in me wanted to say, God, you forsook me. The devil is power. What the devil stole it. And the whole time when God was quiet, he was working. When God gets quiet, he's setting up a strategic something. It ain't even looking at saying even about you. Guess what now? You like the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit won't tell you that your enemy is God's enemy. That he's tired of them messing with you at your job. He's tired of that, 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 that whatever tormenting you and persecuting you about going to church, about doing this. He's tired of them talking behind your back. He's tired of you doing good to them. Uh, so they, like, they, like he said in the book of Exodus, the children of Israel cried out to God and God came down to see what was happening. Woe unto you who persecute Christians and then you think it's going to keep because you've been doing it for years. And all of a sudden when God gets tired, of it, he will get off that throne and come down and fix it. Some of you need to get it right before God comes off that throne because he'll do it for his children. You need to stop messing with people that have a covenant. I ain't talking about no people that's religious that show out as nasty, but a meek person that'll love you, that'll edify you, that will be grateful, won't talk behind your back, that display the fruit of the spirit, you better watch it. I ain't talking about if you raise a cane, provoke your people, test not my anointing, you're ratchet behind. No. <laughs> you have no covering. <laughs> you provoke, I'm gonna tell. Test not my no. I ain't talking about no ratchet save. I'm talking about people that have a pure love, a pure meekness about them. You don't mess with her. That's the last person you need to touch. The Bible says don't touch the widow, the orphan. Don't touch the meek person. Lord, don't do that. Amen. Amen. You hear me? You with me? So God says this. He says, guess what? Be not afraid of them. <laughs> By reason of that, what great number? You need to understand, huh? Stop being afraid of people because they're authority now. Huh? Do your job and go home. Why am I always by myself? Because you're not by yourself. The great ones have to walk alone. The great ones don't have a number to call. The great God, because God wants to foster that bond with you and him. Abraham had that staff by himself. I'm the father of nation. You don't even have any kids. Mediocre average people can call anybody to, call, to, to lie to. Everybody going to agree with a mediocre person because there's no pressure. There's no standing. You have no standard. Nobody going to They're going to be around. I ain't never get. I'm always wrong. When I'm around them, I'm always right. You don't have any standards. So guess what? Everybody fit in there. Hmm? You ought to be confident. Don't drink around them. Don't cuss around them. I feel like I can't be me. Good. You can't because you, 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 your real you is hateful. Good. That's a compliment that you can't be me around me. You can't be yourself around me. That's a compliment. I want to go in there in your room full of weed. Yo, you this and this. You cousin smelling that cognac. No. Huh? Go find people that you're comfortable doing that with. And when they, if you're comfortable around somebody that does that, that shows something about your character. Yeah. That they're comfortable around you doing it. They, if they're comfortable lying and backbiting and, and, and doing all that stuff and, and, and massaging the truth, all the other stuff around you, that shows about you. If they're not comfortable around other people and you alone, that says, okay, you know what? You are sanctified. You, there's something different about you. They don't want to do that around you. That's a compliment. Verse 16, we're almost there. Tomorrow you go down against them. This is God. This is the prophet saying it. Behold, they came up on the cliff of Ziz, and, and you shall find them at the end of the brook. Who? The Amorites and the Moabites and their homies. Before the, witness, the, before the, uh, uh, um, the wilderness of Jural, and you shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves and stand still. And what? See what, baby? The sa Come on. Go ahead. What did you say? And see the salvation of the Lord. Get meek people are confident. Yeah. 
I know how this is going to turn out anyway. You know, it's the same thing. Hallelujah. Yeah, you know, God bless them. You know, <laughs> I told you about when I was a school man and they were, you know, uh, I had a professor boy. He was tall and blonde hair, blue eye. He thought he was it. And, and boy, he would just, you know, compliment one and correct the others and, and, you know, correct the ones he didn't like in front of other people. And people were just scared him because, boy, they were like, man, I, I can't get my doctorate if I, unless I kiss up to him. And I was nice, but I said, God, I trust you. Yeah. I'm going to be respectful, but I'm not going to go and make his enemies mine just to kiss up to him. I say, and, 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 and so guess what? I became public enemy number one. I love that. I said, guess I'm going to go. To, I'm going to use faith. This is a great time to use faith. <laughs> huh? And so, Charles, because you're this way, I'm going to add three more years to your graduation time. Oh, okay, really? Were you supposed to graduate? I said, I'm supposed to graduate in May. And so it's already February. It's too late. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't fill that graduation application anyway. Huh? And guess what? A week before graduation, they said, okay, man, you know what? This, and I wrote a letter to the president. And guess what now? Well, you're going to graduate. And guess who had dependent on me? I got a picture like a Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan dunking on, it's a posterized. He got posterized. My short self, I, I had flew down, I was half shaving with tennis shoes on. He just, God, for you. I remember when I felt in this very office, I went and filled out a prayer board. I remember a light coming in the room, an angel came in that room. A great light came over my right shoulder. I said, the angel came to pick that up. And I remember as I was graduating, the confetti came, and there was this real tall man. I, I never saw him before in my life. He looked me, looked down at me and picked up my, um, my head and looked at me and said, congratulations, Dr. Lucas. I knew it was an angel because I'd never seen him before. He said, congratulations, Dr. Lucas, as the confetti was falling. I said, yes, sir. And one of the very people that tried to stop that was sitting right next to me. He graduated that day and was shocked I was there. You know, like I said, I'm the, I'm the grandson of Watt Lucas now, so, I'm sorry, so I wasn't pastor that day. I got a little bit of my daddy in me, Charles. <laughs> so, I was meek. I was meek before, but when he saw me that day, I was there. I said, what? I belong here. He looked at me and tried to push me back. I opened my legs. I said, I, said, oh, I belong here, Jack. I looked him dead in his eye. <laughs> Had a little bit of fire then, you know. <gasps> but God did it. Yes, Confidence. Meek people are meek people ain't got to argue with you. They go back and pull on that covenant. Yes, <laughs> you can love your that's why you can love your enemies. That's why you can do good to them to persecute you. Because ain't nothing they did can stop God. They can't take your joy. They can't take your blessing. They can't take your life. They can't take your job. If guess what? If you lose your job, it's because you get you better. I'm gonna walk out right now if you don't high five me your fine. So, huh? Scared that I'm scared they're gonna take my job. If God be for you, who can be against you? Yeah, look, look at your neighbor and say, He is my God, and I am his people. God is committed to you. God is covenant to you. God is committed to your grandchildren. God is committed to your children. God is committed to you. God is committed to your family. You are his people. You are his shining star like the disco song says, you are my shining star. Don't you run away. You know, oh, don't you, you know, you know, huh? Back in the day, it's the 70s. Mama them, oh, the kid, you don't know nothing about that. You damn, you're too young to know about that. You remember that song, you know you are my shining star? You remember that, baby? Huh? That was it. Oh, baby. I want to be right where you are. Huh? Till my dying day. Ooh. That was it. That song just still sounds good. You don't need to fight in this battle. <laughs> Mama. Mama had like she don't know. She know that song. That song was the jam. Huh? That was it. What? Huh? Had them uh, bell bottom jumpsuits on and the hoop earrings on back then doing the bump. Come on now. Huh? <laughs> you should not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. God has an affection for you. God has an affection for the people who love him. God is faithful to you. God is, how many things in your, thank you, Holy Spirit, how many things were supposed to take you out and never did? How many things are supposed to take your mind and never did? How many doctor report have you survived? How many eviction notes have you got? Hey, you better jump out. That rival walk out. Hallelujah. Amen. And you still here thriving. That's right. Amen. How 
How many times your bank account been negative, but you thriving now? How many times you thought you didn't know how no food, but you got some now? How many times they tried to, you had to hide your car, but now you got something that's riding better? Huh? You couldn't get, you had to go get used tires, but now you, huh? Yeah. I'm coming where you are. How many times you saw a doctor's report and the devil telling you, is it? People that got this live two years. But you're still here. Hallelujah. You better wave your hand for just because just you're still here. Give him praise because you're still here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has an affection for you. And you got to understand God never promises you that the weapon would never form. He said he's going to be there every time it does. Has he not been there every time the bell rang? Has he not been faithful to you? Every time a challenge has come, has he not shown up? Yes, he has. Because guess what? He is your God and you are the apple of his eye. And so he reassures them. And I want to reassure you. You don't have to be afraid of nothing. There's nothing on this earth. There's nothing the devil got that should make you afraid. As soon as you get a thing, go get some ice cream on his behind. Get some peach cobbler. Go shout. Go give him some praise. Because he can do nothing about it. He's all talk. Meek people are courageous. It take courage to sit in the lion's den. We're going to talk about that next week. Or we got next. We're going to talk about it. It take courage to sit in that lion's den like, Darren, like, uh, like uh, Daniel did. It takes a courage to sit in that fire like uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego do. Meek people are courageous. They didn't go back and argue. Guess what? They didn't go back. These people didn't have to fight. Guess what now? Let's go to verse 18 now. All right? Good, good, good. We got 12 minutes. And, and Jehoshaphat bowed his head to his face to the ground. He worshiped God. And all of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Let me tell you, worshiping the Lord. Let me tell you something, y'all. Some of you have been through so much that you stopped worshiping God. And it's not that you're a bad person. You're just heartbroken. You're disenchanted. You read the word, but you don't have faith no more. Not because you have been, you've been through such an attack. But guess what now? Guess what? You know why? You're weary because guess you've been fighting it by yourself. Some of these problems would have been gone had you deployed meekness and said, Lord, I'm just going to pray and get out of the way. I'm going to stop lecturing my children. I'm going to stop. I'm just going to pray and get out of the way. I have to do it. Look at your neighbor and say, pray and get out of the way. Pray and let it go. Pray and give it to God. And don't you know how tough that is? Yeah, look, I'm not going to be super spirit. It's tough. To do that when you love something, when you're scared, when it's in your face. This ain't easy. Meekness is not easy. If somebody tell you it's easy, they lying to you. I've never had the word before. I've never given something to God and, and taken it back. No, you lying. This take work. This take the fruit of the spirit. This is the hardest thing to do is to stay meek when you worry. And that the, the devil coming, the Amorites and the Moabites are coming and surrounding you. You got two weeks before you got to get out of here. My boss don't like me. This and that. And the devil, huh? A child on drugs. They in prison. They're in an ultimate lifestyle. This is happening. And then this stuff is going in your ears. This right here. God never. God understands. What I can tell you is just keep going to God until the peace comes. Peace might not come your first prayer, but keep going to God. Keep bowing before God. That's the see we got to say, Lord God, I'm at this cross, I prayed three minutes ago, it's cropping back. Lord, I got to go back. Sometimes you have to keep going back. Sometimes that stuff attacking your sleep, you just have to keep praying, God, Lord, give me peace till that peace comes. Look at your name and say, be persistent. Verse 19. And the Levites, the children, and the children, uh, and the Levites, the children of the Korites, and the children of the uh, Korites, and the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord of Israel with a loud voice. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. As they went forth, uh, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear you, hear me, O, Jeru o, o Judah. And ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, and so shall you what be established. What does that mean? 
God, when God puts you in a place, establishment means he's going to provide. Your job don't provide. You don't provide. When God establishes yourself, when God gives you the car, he gave it to you. When God gives you the husband, he gives it to you. When God gives you clean, clean health, he gives it to you. He still your neighbor say establish. Establish is a settled thing. Establish is permanent. Establish is the foundation. Establish, you can rest there and establish. You don't have to worry about it being taken away from you. When God established, when you believe God and God establishes you, the worry and fear of you losing it is over with. Because what God gives, He protects. Believe His prophets and so shall you prosper. I feel like I'm one of the prophetic people of God. And when you believe this, what does that mean? Lay, latch on to the word of God. This is your word. This is the word. But you need to, when you hear the word of God, you need to be, God is speaking to me specifically. I need to come out this room with confidence and rejoice now. And guess what now? That thing I was, and I know that because the enemy is trying to attack me now. Guess what now? That that thing I was struggling with, God's got, you need to understand that God's speaking directly to you. Saying that that thing that's been molesting you, that boss has been molesting you, that, that medical report, that child gone, guess what now? It's a done thing. God's got it. You can rest because the prophet of God said what? So, and guess what now? When you believe it, it will be, it, you will prosper. Amen. When I add my faith to it now, it activates victory. Look at your neighbor and say, trust God. Trust God. Verse 21, and when he had consulted the people and appointed singers unto the Lord, and, and guess what now, that they should praise the beauty of his holiness, and they went out before the army to say, praise the Lord for his, guess what, his mercy endures forever. Guess what? Meek people give God praise because the battle's already won. Amen. <laughs> why aren't you mad? I just told you all. Why are you saying hallelujah? Because I know how it turns out. <laughs> I know that what you're saying, I know that what you're doing is not going to, it's going to work for my good. Yes. Are you mocking me? No, I'm not. I'm giving God praise. Yes. You're not about to take my joy today, I think, because I, I know how this is going to turn out. Yes. And I know it's the devil doing it. Yes. Hmm? And when they began to sing and praise the Lord, guess what? When they began to sing and praise, and when they began to sing and praise, and guess what? Now, when they began to praise God, when they began to praise God instead of being worried, when I turned that into praise, when I turned the prayers of praise music on now, when I began to exalt God instead of my problem now, when I began to focus on God, when I began to stand flat-footed and say, Lord, how great is my God, when I began to shout, sometimes you need to find somebody, you need to find a praise partner when you're struggling, and guess what now? When they begin to praise the Lord, guess what? Well, guess what now? The Lord set ambushment against the children of Ammon, uh, uh, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Guess what does that mean? They turn on each other. <laughs> huh? They turn on each other. There was some, I saw some kind of thing where somebody had a secret recording of these people in Tennessee, the, the state house of Tennessee that um, 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 kicked out these two young black men and, and they got elected, but they kicked them out and they had a recording. And guess what? They were in the recording arguing with each other. <laughs> you were supposed to be with us, Bill, but when you said this and this didn't work because all of us, are, it don't sound like because it makes me sound racist when you do that stuff. But guess what? Now, God put an ambushment. They start arguing with each other. <laughs> They start arguing. Don't start worrying about their people at work. They can start arguing with each other. Them spirits don't get along. <laughs> the problem you think you think there's order in hell. There ain't no order. In Man, them demons fight each other. That's my body. No, that's my body. No, that's my body. That's no, no, that's my turn. They argue. They do too. <laughs> ain't no all that stuff is chaos. <laughs> <laughs> Why wow, you need me laughing at the devil? <laughs> Laugh, just give me one. <laughs> huh? You need to laugh at the devil. Because you know what's going to happen. Oh, son said, don't wait till the battle's over. What, baby? Because in the end, what? Come on now. What? 
And so they began, it's been verse 20, 30, 23, we're about to close out. And the children of Ammon and, and Moab stood up, stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir. They start fighting each other. And Ammon and Moab gained together against Mount Seir and utterly slayed them and destroyed them. And when they made the end of the inhabitants of Mount Seir, everyone helped to destroy each other. <laughs> ah, two nations fought the other one. Then when they got finished each other, they turned on each other. <laughs> Don't want he do it? Only God can do it. Hmm? <laughs> Verse 21. And when Judah came towards and watched the tower of the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude. They didn't have to lift a finger. And behold, they were dead bodies falling to the earth, and none escaped, and none escaped, and none escaped. And none escaped. And why now? God, why is God allowing this? Because God wants to deal with your enemies once and for all so you can enjoy your promised land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. God gives you a promised land, but he wants to give you some rest too. And there's going to come a season, if you, if you hold your tongue in this season and just pray about it. Why is God quiet? Rejoice when he's quiet because he's given a permanent solution. He's, he, get, thank you, Holy Spirit. He's literally giving your enemy enough room to hang themselves. Yeah. They're going to mess around and say the wrong thing to the wrong person and, that, and they're going to get dealt with. That situation, your health, God's got it to where he said, no, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I heard you praying. Just take him in. Do this. Go to the doctor. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. We trust in the Lord and he will establish. Establish means I'm going to put the end to this thing so you don't have to wrestle with that thing forever. It's a, establish is an ongoing thing. Yes, it is. Hmm? When Joseph and his people came away, and, 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 and then, and when Joseph and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the, with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for, for themselves. Guess what? They took the enemy. <laughs> Hallelujah! They took what the enemy had. <laughs> them fools came to ambush them, but them idiots went and brought everything with them. And so Judah, guess you didn't see what happened. Judah didn't, did Judah, Judah, Judah didn't have to go to Moab, Moab, Ammonite, or Amorite to, to get their stuff or to fight a war. They brought all their stuff with them, and they still didn't have to fight the war. And they brought the stuff and hand delivered it. <laughs> Yo, boy, you probably going to get their job. <laughs> hmm? And I have to do a thing. If you just learn this right here, we got two minutes, and we're going to get the takeaways on the Bible study. Amen. You need to understand that meekness is not weakness. Look at your neighbor and say, let it play out. The devil wants you so bad to touch it. The devil wants you so bad to yell. The devil wants you so bad to get in your flesh. He wants you to do everything but keep your mouth shut and pray. That don't mean you don't correct bad behavior. That ain't mean that. You know, no, 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 don't be like that. Don't get religious on me now. But that mean when you coming up in an attack, How many of you have lost your job and you have just kept your mouth shut? God was going to be dealing with that person anyway. You just had to wait a week. You were a week, some of you were a week away from a raise, a week away from a promotion. And guess what? Because the attack got more intense, you got to understand that guess what? The, the, the more intense the devil attack, you need to understand that the blessings on the other end of it. When that attack gets tense, you need to be still. You're like, uh, uh God's up to something here. The devil mad. Not, uh, he want me to mess this up. You got to shut the, look at the name say discernment. You need to have enough discernment to understand now the atmosphere that you're dealing with. So that guess what now? When the enemy begins to attack you, you're like, oh, he mad about something. He's like, you need to be, uh, uh, first I used to tell me, boy, when we got that house, the first time I, I was out there sipping my little energy drink on the balcony, just chill out, listen to the birds, and, and something's in my head. Say, baby, the devil is mad because you're finally happy. <laughs> And I said, oh, okay. Cross my legs and, you know. Discernment in people says, hmm, something about to happen because the devil attacking, he ain't just did this. This ain't just coming. I'm just going to sit, something good's about to happen. He mad. I wonder what's happening. And then discernment people say, I'm not going to do anything. 
I'm just going to sit back and watch. I'm just going to wait this out. He mad. He, you need to understand when the devil wants you to react to get you to mess up something. Then when you come to the other side, you're like, see, if I had said something, I would have messed up everything. If I had left, something else would have messed up. If I had went over here and did this out of panic, guess what? I wouldn't have had this. That stuff is in your life now just to get you to react. Don't do it. Be meek about it and rest. Keep your mouth shut. Hmm? They stripped all that stuff away more than they could carry you away. Hmm? It was so much. <laughs> and on the, it took them four days to get it. They assembled themselves in the, in, in the Valley of Burqa. For there they blessed the Lord. Therefore the name of the place was called the Valley of Burqa unto this day. Amen. And we're going to get to the takeaways on Wednesday. Just bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you, Lord God. We love you that you're our God. Isn't, isn't he good? Ain't God good? Ain't he wonderful? And his love for you is perfect. Hallelujah. His mercy endures forever. Don't let your hard times, as my wife gave me this, this is beautiful too. Don't let the hard times in your life get you to forget that God, make you think God forgot about you. God knows the very hairs on your head. And if you don't have any, it's zero. But still. <laughs> And the translation says he don't just know how many hairs you got. He numbered and named every last individual one of them. God loves you. Hmm? You need to rest in that. And some of you have not, as we close, guess what? Some of you have not had love in your life like that, a father's love in your life like that. So it's hard to, to re-embrace this because the love you had in your life has come and gone, has betrayed you, has forsaken you. The men in your life have chosen other things over you, have broken their promises. So guess what now? It's tough to, 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 to receive that. But guess what? God loves you with a protecting love, with a nurturing love. He, he takes ownership of you. He, you are his prized possession. And when you get that, you'll embrace this. The Bible says when you believe God, so shall you be established. What is it? How do you be when you're established, guess what? The money ain't going to run out. You can give because guess what? You're in the promised land now. Huh? Go out and get some food. And it might look a certain way. Guess what God will provide tomorrow? Because you're established. There are certain things you establish. When you establish, it ain't nothing you got to strive for anymore. That life is over with. Huh? I got to do this for my kids because they might leave. Like, no, you can't. Correct the booger. They ain't going to stay nowhere because when they establish, they might run. They can't go nowhere because God has brought them back. Huh? They might fuss. They'd be back 10 minutes later in the refrigerator. <laughs> what happened? What happened? I thought you were leaving. Oh, I'm sorry, mama. <laughs> huh? Because you were stabbed. And it says also believe in this prophet so shall you prosper. When you don't know a father's love, you can receive that today. God is aching to become your God, but you got to choose him. He's already chosen you, but you got to choose him back. What we call in science is this is a symbiotic relationship. It means it's duplicity. It goes both ways. He chose you. Now you got to respond by saying, oh God, I choose you. I re guess what? I receive you, Lord God. Are you ready to receive the love of God? Are you ready to see the protection of God? Are you, yeah, yeah, there are benefits to it. Amen. He wants to take ownership and protection. You ever seen how sometimes I look at, look at my wife as my prized possession? I, I, see, huh? I look at them pretty old Coca-Cola root beer eyes, and I look and smile and give her a little kiss. And, and sometimes, sometimes a mama might catch me in the kitchen, and I'm counting them freckles. I'm like, one, two. Huh? She had me working yesterday at the beach. I'm like, ah. I said, if you were ugly now, we'd just go get a gym mat with <laughs> But guess what? When you have children, they're your prized possessions. And they know it. They know it. I saw the baby in the Bible study. She was eating little snacks and just sitting up there. But she knew she was loved. Prized. But that's how God, see, you can sit in his lap. You are his, God is love. He or his prized possession. Don't you think he'll protect you? You can tone it down and be meek. You don't have to be afraid. 
Guess what? It's time to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. God is waiting to be your father, but you've got to meet him halfway. Don't you try to try to handle things by yourself, handle your eternal destiny by yourself, trying to be perfect by yourself. Amen. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you as a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Make me a new person because I confess that you are Lord. And I believe that God raised you from the dead. Come into my heart, make me a new person, and fill me with the Holy Spirit. And I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for those new souls. We thank you for the new members, Lord God, because we pray in faith. I feel the power of God. That this is the day of their salvation, Lord God. For those that are here, so for those who see the broadcast today or forever, Lord God, let this message be a time, Lord God, uh, what we call a Kairos moment or an appointed moment, that they might come and receive you. Let it be a safe place, Lord God, to receive a Father's love. And I ask you, Lord God, to turn their captivity, Lord God. Fight their battles like you've done mine, Lord God. Father, I pray for the congregation, Lord God. Lord God, I thank you that whatever problems they had are left here or left at this broadcast, Lord God. And they go out praising you, Lord God, for you are the Lord who fights their battles. Lord, you are not David's God or just David and Abraham's God, Lord, but you are their God, Lord God. Show yourself strong in their lives, Lord God, as they display meekness, Lord God. Let them rest in your arms today, Lord God. Do me a favor. As we end this broadcast, we're going to say keep moving, but I, I'm going to say one, two, three, but I want you to imagine that problem in your hand, ball up and throw it out, and then when you toss it, we're going to say keep moving, okay? One, two, three, keep moving.